This is the second video in the series of videos that deals with the topic of movable vocal parts. So last video we talked about your breath, your breath support, um, your abdominal muscles and your diaphragm and how their interaction with your vocal cords can change your sound. Uh, this video is going to actually talk about the vocal folds or vocal cords themselves. Uh, so let's get right to it. This diagram deals with five major vocal fold functions. This top one right here is looking at the larynx from the side. So if I were to take my larynx and pop it out, if it were a cartridge, I could pop out and go and pop it out like this and then turn it sideways, we'd be looking at it right here. So this is essentially the front of the, the larynx. So we're looking at this first muscular activity there. I'll talk about that in a second. We're looking at these four diagrams down here. They deal with a top view looking down on the larynx. That's the front of the throat or the front of the larynx. Larynx is obviously the word for the voice box, which is the box that contains your, your vocal folds in here. Okay, so these five muscular activities are uh, have a dramatic effect on your vocal sound. So here we go. Number one, the first muscle that we have here is called the cricothyroid muscle. All right, and if you look at this diagram here, you can really see you can see these little uh, arrows. They they should be showing up there on your uh, uh, on your screen. These little arrows here show the actual, um, the pull, where the muscle is stretching to. This little shark tooth looking thing right here, that's called the arytenoid, all right? That's a piece of cartilage that's, uh, uh, when looked at from the top, it's responsible for uh, swiveling the vocal folds open and closed, as well as uh, the vocal folds attached to it here. So what happens is when you change pitch, the, the uh, cricothyroid muscle stretches and elongates for that change of pitch. Just like when you tighten the string on a guitar, it makes a higher pitch. Same thing with your vocal folds. They stretch oh, like that. They tighten and, and the, the higher the note, the more there is a stretch of the vocal fold. So essentially this is the muscle, the cricothyroid muscle, which is responsible for creating the changes in our pitch. Now, if we were to look at that uh, vocal function from the top, essentially what that's going to look like uh, is that's going to look like this. That action up there is gonna look like this from the top view. This whole circular area right here, essentially, it would be as if that area is tipping backwards. Ah, just like that. It's stretching backwards to uh, lengthen for the change of pitch. Next, these muscles are the posterior cricorytenoid and the lateral cricorytenoid muscles. And what they do is they're sort of like the bicep and tricep for the vocal folds, all right? And essentially, they, um, one muscle is responsible for swiveling the arytenoids open, and that's the uh, uh, posterior cricorytenoid muscle. And then this muscle is responsible for swiveling the arytenoids this way and closing the vocal folds. So in other words, we've got open vocal folds. When you're breathing, if you're, making a, if you're just breathing, then when you make a sound, they close. Uh, uh, uh. And now if I go, if I make them close and then uh, change pitch, uh, uh, that's when the cricothyroid gets involved, okay? So, posterior cricorytenoid muscle opens the vocal folds. The lateral cricorytenoid muscle closes the vocal folds. Now, let's look at these bottom two here. Now, we've got the transverse arytenoid muscle, as well as the muscles, the vocalis muscle here, and the thyroarytenoid muscle. Now, the transverse arytenoid muscle, this is a really important muscle. We all are pretty good at breathing, so we are able to open our vocal folds. We all can make vocal sound, for the most part. Uh, well, everybody can make vocal sound. We all can close our vocal folds, we can bring them together. But, there are lots of people when they sing that have, um, uh, extra breathy sounds, uh, extra breathy uh, vocal production. Ah, uh, 
If I were to sing, what's happening there is I'm using a sound that doesn't have a complete uh, adduction of the vocal folds. Adduction is the word that we use when we're trying to sound really smart, like voice pedagogues, to describe closing the vocal folds. You don't have proper adduction. What that means is you don't have a proper vocal fold closure. Okay. Um, so the muscle that's responsible for that uh, vocal fold closure is called the transverse arytenoid muscle. Check that out. You can see right there that red piece of flesh, that little meat in there, squeezing the vocal folds closed. So, super important muscle. I'm going to talk about that more at length here in just a second. Next and final muscle that we're going to talk about here is the vocalis and thyroarytenoid muscle. Now they are actually uh, sort of two um, sibling muscles as you can see. They're sitting over top of, uh, or actually they are essentially the meat of the vocal fold themselves. Uh, and this is the muscle, these are the muscles right here. Now notice the direction of the arrows if you can see that clearly. See those arrows, the black arrows there? Those arrows are pulling in to themselves. They're sort of stretching in together, right? Now, if you're, uh, if you're paying attention, you're going to think, well, wait a minute, that doesn't make sense. Because the cricothyroid muscle up here, when I told you that how that looks from the top, I told you that that muscle, the cricothyroid muscle, when looked at from, that, from the top angle, is actually stretching the vocal mechanism backwards. So that's pretty crazy, right? We've got this muscle group here that's squeezing the vocal mechanism toward the, the front of the thyroid bone, squeezing it down, and then we've got another muscle group pulling back at the same time. Pretty crazy, right? Well, what that does for your sound is this. That makes your sound go from a thickened vocal fold sound Ah, uh, ah, uh, I've got very thickened vocalis and thyroarytenoid muscle. Ah, uh, I've got very thin uh, vocalis and thyroarytenoid muscle. Ah, uh, I have this uh, same amount of stretch for the pitch, so I'm maintaining a stretch that's giving me the same frequency or the same pitch or the same hertz. But I'm having different amounts of thickening of the vocal fold, which is changing that sound. Okay? So, What's crazy is we've got this crazy vocal mechanism that's stretching to change pitch and also choosing how thick or thin the vocal folds are while that stretching is occurring. And that's what's responsible for you learning how to uh, balance your and transition between registers. Uh, going from a thickened vocal fold sound on the bottom, ma 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 to a thin vocal fold sound on the top, which is what I just did there, is a real important coordination to learn as a singer. A lot of times I have singers in the beginning that get stuck in either a thickened vocal fold production or a thickened vocalis muscle production or they get caught in a thin vocalis muscle production. So a thickened vocalis muscle production would be somebody that does this. Ma, 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 ah! When they go really high, ah! They can't release into a thin sound. In the male voice, the thinnest sound is typically labeled the falsetto. Ooh, I've got a lot of stretch on my vocal folds. The, the cricothyroid muscle is really stretching but there's not a whole lot of thickening, okay? Ooh. So one thing to really, uh, that, that's really important to integrate into your vocal exercises is, and, and you'll be able to download this, these exercises. Ma, 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 Working hard to make that transition, well, smoother than I just did there. Ma, 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 so that you can get seamlessly from thickened to thin and back. And that's your coordination of the thickening muscle and the stretching muscle being able to work well together. If you were to make a yodel sound, yodle, 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 what you're doing is you're going from a thickened sound, and then you're 
flopping up to a stretched uh, thin vocal fold sound really quickly. So the vocalis muscles sort of resist, 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 let it go quickly, and then the chords stretch to that position. And that little snap you hear when you yodel up to the high note is the release of the vocalis and thyroretinoid muscle. Yodeling, yodeling. Okay, that's what is happening inside the larynx when you yodel. So, just to recap here one more time, we have the cricothyroid up here, which is the muscle that's responsible for ah, changing the pitch. We've got the muscles down here, the posterior cricoarytenoid muscle, which is the muscle that's responsible for opening the vocal folds when you breathe. We've got the uh, lateral cricoarytenoid muscle, which is responsible for bringing the vocal folds close together uh, when you go to make a vocal sound. We've got the transverse arytenoid muscle here, which is the muscle that squeezes those vocal folds together once they're closed. And then lastly, we have the vocalis and thyroarytenoid muscle, which is responsible for thickening the cords while that stretching is occurring. And those are, in a nutshell, the major functions of the intrinsic laryngeal muscles uh, that uh, you'll use for singing. So if you take a lesson with me now, you're going to be equipped when I say, uh, that sound is a little too thickened, okay? Uh, I need you to thin it out some. Or uh, I'm not getting enough clean vocal fold closure, let's, let's work on that a little bit. You'll have an awareness now about what muscles are going to be involved in that sound. And for you women who are working uh, tirelessly on your mixing, which I'm going to do a little segment on, um, knowing your uh, knowledge of thickened and thin vocal fold function will be uh, really important because it's not just as, uh, uh, as cut and dry as thin vocal fold sound is your head voice, thickened vocal fold sound is your chest voice. There's a whole gray area in there where your vocalis muscle can be a little bit thickened while the stretch is occurring and that gives you that sort of fake belt or that middle gray area between head voice and chest voice. When you hear somebody singing a sound, especially in contemporary musical theater, where it's not quite belting but it's not quite head voice, it's that middle area. I'll do a whole special on that as well. But in a nutshell, there you go. Those are the functions. Uh, that's part two of our vocal movable parts uh, series. And uh, those are the functions of the intrinsic laryngeal muscles and how they affect your sound. <laughs> Down, 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 down.